Hello and welcome to the Scuffle channel. Today, I'd like to introduce you guys to this very inexpensive, pretty cheap and budget oriented $50,000 workstation PC for 2017. Now with this and my $10,000 gaming PC build, we're gonna be wrapping up this series of very expensive PC builds. And we're gonna get back to the regular PC build schedule very soon because I have been looking at Ryzen and Cabby Lake and you're definitely gonna see some new builds coming out soon to feature some of those processors. But anyways though, like the $10,000 gaming PC build video about Two years ago, I released this $50,000 workstation beast editing PC that probably a lot of you saw because it was the first video to hit a million views on the channel. So I'm like, you know, let's go ahead and produce a sequel to it because, you know, why not? But real quick before we get into the video, the giveaway for the Havoc 380L is still going on and all you need to do is simply like this video, be sure you're subscribed and click the bell notification button. And you are going to comment down below because I will have to choose a winner and I'm gonna do that by picking one of you guys randomly in one of the videos that this giveaway is being hosted on. So I'm gonna click on you know one of your usernames, find out your social media links so I can contact you whenever I announce the winner coming near like the end of this month or at the beginning of next month, depending on my visual schedule, but be sure to enter. So to start off the build for the processors, we are choosing two Intel Core E52699V4s, which is going to give us a total of 44 cores, 88 threads, 55 megabytes in total cache. And all this is going to be running at 2.2 gigahertz, I believe to 3.6 gigahertz. And all this is going to be for a crazy huge expensive price that I can't remember off the top of my head, but here it is right here in the counter. But uh, yeah, this is going to be the best dual CPU setup we can go with for this PC. But now you may be asking, why did I go with any Intel Xeon E7 chips? Well, those E7 chips, well, yes, they are more expensive and actually a little bit faster. Those are meant for server rig setups. And this isn't a server, it's a workstation PC. And on top of that, those E7 builds usually are meant to be put like in a server cabinet. So you can't really fit like graphics cards into them that are gonna be cooled adequately. So I couldn't really go with any E7 chip processors, even though if I could, this PC would be even crazier and even faster than what it already is. But that's the reason why I didn't go with any Xeon E7 processors. So we're sticking it to the E5 series. Now, for you guys who are curious as to the performance of these two 2699v4s together, well, here's some benchmarks showing out those two CPUs working together and some benchmarks. And as you can see, it blows everything else out of the water. And clearly this is the best CPU setup we can go with for a workstation PC build setup like this. Now for the motherboard, we're going with the ASUS Z10 PE D8 SSI EEB motherboard. Now this is a pretty expensive motherboard, but there's a reason why I chose it. Now, first of all, it could support two CPUs, two, more specifically two Intel Xeon E5 processors, which obviously is why we chose it. Secondly, it could support up to 512 gigabytes of RAM. And actually, if you guys haven't noticed, but there's the Asus D16, which is its more expensive brother, and that can support up to one terabyte of RAM. But I learned this out, but you can't go above 512 gigabytes of RAM on like a Windows 10 Enterprise or Pro-based system. So what's the point in getting more RAM than what Windows can support? So we're keeping it to 512 gigabytes, which is the max that the D8 can support. But lastly, it can support quad SLI, unlike the D16, which can only support three-way SLI. So that's the reason why we chose this, and it's pretty much the best motherboard we can use in a situation like this. So that's why we're using the D8 for this crazy $50,000 workstation PC. Now for these CPU coolers, I'm going with two Noctua NHD15s. And these are pretty much the big daddy of all Noctua processors. Now, since there are a lot of high-end components in this build, and this PC is going to inevitably just be producing a lot of heat in general, we're gonna make sure that we at least minimize all the heat in the system you know, where we can, and that's where these two NHD15s comes in. These will definitely cool off the two Xeon processors in this build pretty well, because actually the NHD15 has some some pretty awesome specs for its price, which is that it has an air CFM rating of 82.5, along with a decibel rating of 19.6 to 20. 
4.2, I think. And that decibel to air cooling ratio is pretty impressive for the price you're paying for. So these two nhd 15s will definitely do a pretty good job in cooling off the system. And I think it should look pretty cool having these two CPU coolers right next to each other in this dual CPU system. Now for the RAM, we're going with two crucial 256 gigabyte DDR4 ECC RAM kits that's going to be totaling up to 512 gigabytes of RAM. Now to ensure that we have this 512 gigabytes of RAM, since you know obviously Windows 10 Pro and Windows 10 Enterprise can at the most only use 512 gigabytes, I want to make sure that we have all this RAM because it's crucial you get what I did there? It's crucial that we have all this RAM because when it comes to workstation builds, it's generally accepted that you're gonna want a lot of RAM because when it comes to workstation applications, they love to eat up a lot of RAM because that's what they do. They process and compute things and that's where all that RAM is gonna come in in handy. Whereas in gaming, it doesn't really matter as much. But like what I said, we're gonna go with all this RAM because it's the most that Windows can support and it's the most that this PC can support. So. That's why we're going with all this RAM so we can have the craziest workstation build. So when it comes to the storage on this crazy expensive build, we're going to go with a single Samsung 960 Pro 2 terabyte M.2 drive and eight Samsung Evo 850 4 terabyte SSDs. Now you may be asking why did I go with eight 4 terabyte SSDs? Well, when it comes to a workstation build, you're going to want a lot of hard drive storage, or in this case, solid state storage, because let's say you're like you're rendering a really high bit rate, high resolution video, and you're going to be doing that like constantly every day. That's going to eventually add up when it comes to exporting all those video edits. So I think at the most part, like 10 terabytes of storage would be plenty for that. But just to be sure, and since we want to obviously max out the system, we're going to fill up all eight of the SATA 6 gigabit ports of the motherboard with these eight four terabyte SSDs, which in total will give us 32 terabytes of solid state storage, not hard drive storage, but solid state storage. So it'll be crazy fast and it should be just plenty for this workstation PC. And as for the M.2 drive, it's you know one of the fastest M.2 drives we can get and it's pretty much gonna store Windows and our primary applications and two terabytes should be enough to hold all of that. So that's the store solution we're going with for this $50,000 workstation PC. Now for the most expensive part of this PC, we're going with four NVIDIA Quadro P6000 graphics cards. And these aren't the old M6000s, no. These are the brand new Pascal P6000 Quadro cards, which are stupid fast, and they're crazy expensive too. And we're going with four of these, so keep that in mind. So each of these graphics cards are gonna be holding a total of 3,840 CUDA cores, along with 24 gigabytes of GDDR5X VRAM, and you can pretty much guess it with these graphics cards, but all these are gonna be able to support well over their 5K resolution limit. And these four graphics cards are pretty much gonna be the heart of this PC when it comes to doing any sort of graphics computing or graphics rendering. And these four cards are just gonna be so stupidly fast when it comes to doing those applications. And one more crazy comparison that I talked about in the intro was that usually when it comes to workstation graphics cards, when you compare them to their graphics card counterparts for gaming, usually the workstation cards that have like the exact same specs as like a high-end gaming card are still slower than their gaming counterparts just because workstation cards weren't meant for gaming. But for the first time in like a long time, because I remember this, this didn't happen with Maxwell and this didn't happen with Kelper, but actually the P6000 for a Quadro card actually outscored the Titan X in some gaming applications, which is insane because that shouldn't happen. Usually the super high end gaming card should be able to score above the super high end workstation card all the time because that's what a gaming card is. It's for gaming. But for the first time, a workstation card is actually faster than the highest end gaming card out there. So, you know, that's just something that shows how crazy fast these P6000s can really be. So we're definitely including four of these to ensure that we have the most graphics computing power possible. Now for the case, we're going with the Case Labs Magnum SM8. Now there's one very big reason why I chose this case, and that's because it's one of the few cases out there that can still support the SSI EEB form factor. And that's just because, you know, not a lot of people build dual CPU systems anymore. But aside from that, it can also can support two power supplies in one case, which we're gonna absolutely need because spoiler alert, this PC uses way more than 1600 watts of power. So we're gonna need those two PSU slots so we can have more than 1600 watts in this system. 
But on top of that, it's a case lapse case. And yes, it's expensive. But if you think of the PC, we're going to need a pretty good case to hold in all these very expensive and very precious parts. And that's where the SM8 is going to do its job. It's a very solid enclosure that's going to be great at cooling off all the components, as well as holding everything in a very sturdy position. So that's why we're going with the SM8. Now, in the final part of this $50,000 workstation PC build, we're going with two EVGA Supernova T2s rated at 1600 watts with a power efficiency rating of 80 plus titanium. Now, you may be asking, why did I get two of these? Well, that's because the estimated power drawage of this system is going to be at 2800 watts, which is a whole lot. So we couldn't really go with like two 1500 watt power supplies because that'd be 3000 watts and you know just to be safe if the system were running at a hundred percent low we want you know some extra wattage just to be you know safe with the system so that's why we went with two 1600 watt power supplies and also it's pretty safe to say that we should probably have you know an 80 plus titanium power supply in here because you know having such high end components and drawing in so much wattage we're gonna want you know the most efficient power supplies on the market because we want to make sure the system is using power efficiently so that's where we want these to be 80 plus titanium and lastly there's going to be no problem in having these psus in the case because as i said the case can support up to two power supplies which is pretty awesome and not to mention i think the supernova t2 actually scored a 9.9 .9 on johnny guros which is you know a pretty pretty good sport it's uh near perfect so that's why we're definitely going with two of these to support the wattage needed for this crazy $50,000 workstation PC. But anyways, thank you guys so much for sticking it through the entire video. I really do appreciate it when you guys watch it through all these videos. It makes me feel good on the inside. But you know, as usual, be sure to like, paper, subscribe and all that. And this is the Skyville Channel, signing out.